Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations, graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly Grounds Coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, it's scary. Hey, welcome to Still Token With. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here, and we have an awesome show scheduled for you today. And as always, before we get the ball rolling, make sure you check out the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. That's where you're going to find all the information about our awesome guests and these awesome dudes here. Dude number one, Ben, how's it going? <laughs> Good. How you doing, brother? Doing fine. Doing fine. Dude number two, Jeffrey. I want to know when we became dudes. <laughs> I've always been a dude. Well, yeah, but in the introduction, dudes. Dude. Hey, dude. Come on. Dude. You're killing me, guy. <laughs> I'm just glad you pushed the right fucking button to start tonight. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, well, I got one job. Might as well do it. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Welcome to the show, everybody. Yeah. So, so, so we're going to have fun. We we are, and I'm I'm waiting for you to do uh, try to pronounce our most awesome guest's name, Jeffrey. Uh, it's um. Uh, let me introduce Chloe Tracos. That's right. Woo-hoo. See, and it wasn't che- even on the screen. I could. He cheated. He cheated when you went to get your coffee. He asked her. He cheated. Oh, I, cheated. <laughs> I kind of figured he would. <laughs> well, it was it was accepted either either way. So Tracos or Tracos. That's right. That's See? right. Yes. Well, uh, the actual correct pronunciation is tricos, but Americans say tricos, which I think sounds so much better. So I'm happy to just go with that. Awesome. Fair enough. enough. <laughs> and uh, just a heads up, we'll play the trailer a little later, but you have a brand new movie that was out in theaters introducing yes. Jodea. Yes. Uh, and uh, that came out uh, just uh, two weeks ago, right? That's right. Yes. Wow. I was, I'm impressed that you didn't butcher the name, Leo. Oh, wait, Leo's the dork. He doesn't put you the name. That's our job. My bad. (laughs) Chodeo, see. See, it's so new, it's not even on my notes. Well, that's because you didn't look at the right stuff, because I have it on mine. See? Oh, well, see, I go go back. Oh, me too. Oh, oh, me too. You know? I couldn't find much dirt on her, though. I found a little bit. No, I, I, I didn't find any dirt. Well, I wouldn't call it dirt, but something interesting. But we'll get into that after. You know? 
list, right? Well, there's so, a lot uh, of interesting yeah. stuff. But, but yeah, uh, there's a ton of interesting stuff. Fire away, Leo, because you want to say something. I can see well, that. I was just going to say, you know, uh, looking at your IMDb, The oh. Righteous Gemstones. That's right. Yes. Oh, my God. I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. It is. It's um. I was more impressed that you actually did an appearance on MacGyver. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that I that was um yeah yeah that was just a, that was just a I I think I it's like that was like a blink and you miss me one but yeah the the gemstones was more fun. It does yeah I mean it didn't matter it's a blink I mean that was always one of my favorite shows and just the fact that you were a blink on it. <laughs> well, this is I mean well this is the new one not the classic old one. Oh yeah yeah. I know I um yeah it's I I personally don't think it's as good as the old one but that's just. But no, it's know. not as good as you. I agree with her. Yeah, I like her already. <laughs> yep. No. No. Yes. No. Nothing. Nothing beats the original. Yeah. Yeah. So the new one, did, what, did he like? Was he able to do stuff with like a paper clip and a piece of gum, and then you, you know? know what? I, I mean, to be honest, I don't actually watch the show. But, um, <laughs> I you was will just, not be on another episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, but um, but yeah, it's uh, but I presume he is. You know, um, actually, it's it's very interesting. Um, when I was growing up in Africa, there was a horrible case where um, kid these kids were kidnapped in South Africa, and one girl actually escaped because she watched MacGyver and she saw how. Um, she opened the, which she was locked in a closet. She opened it with a tin can, and um, after that, like my mom, like went out and bought the whole collection of videos and was like, "You got, you kids are watching this in case you're ever kidnapped." <laughs> that's that's awesome, actually. So that, that yeah, is, yeah. yeah, she actually, um, and she escaped, and thanks to her, they actually caught the couple who were kidnapping these kids. Um, but yeah, but it was thanks to MacGyver. Um, so yeah. Wow. You know, it, it could go an opposite way. I mean, I love the original MacGyver, but uh, they tried to do a spy show similar where the spy was like uh, the first season. He was like saying, you know, if you need to get into a room, you know, this is how you make like a small bomb to like, blow, you know, and he it was just like MacGyver, you know, talking things through. But the thing was, what he was talking about was actually real and they had to like cut that out. <laughs> you know, like so get the people could, yeah, get the, yeah. the wrong oh, yeah. people seeing it and yeah. Yeah, I mean, crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, it was a cool concept, but it was, uh, yeah, it, it really went downhill after the first season. <laughs> and that's where Leo dorks out, folks. I do. Sorry. About that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, so you're a writer, a producer, right? An actress. Yes. What else do you do? Well. Uh, producing something I do because I have to. It's not by choice. <laughs> um, uh, I'm mostly a writer actress, but yes, it's a uh, you know it's kind of one of these things in this you know to get your project off the ground, you kind of have to play a producing role as well. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, well, she's right. It's yeah, she's kind absolutely of what, right. Kind of what we're doing, right? Yes, absolutely. It's yeah. You know. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so one thing that I, I I'm not sure if you guys uh, had a chance to watch it, but I, I watched the you're introducing Judea, and uh, one thing that I love about it, it is sh movies like this showing the I, I since I don't know that lifestyle like how much of it is real. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, a lot of it is. Um, yeah, it's poetic license, obviously, but yeah. it's. Um, a lot of it was inspired by real stuff. I mean, everyone going out to be an actor is is told unpleasant things, like why they're wrong for a role and stuff. And of course, I I had to like make I made the grand character was like a caricature of all horrible agents. He says yep. to her, you know, you're too ugly, um, you can't act, you know, all of this stuff. So, um, I, you know, that's stuff we've we've all experienced. And then it just you know, and stuff like um, also in in L. A. They very um. You know, you just can't get meetings with agents. It's impossible. And so, um, you know, you have to get a manager to book a meeting with an agent. It's like, so um, that was why, and that was where I came up with the idea of the comic Jodea kind of sneaking into the offices, getting escorted out kind of thing, because I thought that adds to the comedy of it. But yeah, but they are, they are like that, that here. They are very, um, you know, there is like this whole us and them kind of way of life. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it is, it's, it's, um, you know, it is, it's very hard to, to break into, which is kind of the whole thing of the story. And uh, so like a director actually staying in the trailer and then like having a camera and microphone on set is, is that like, do people actually do that? Apparently they do. I haven't encountered it. Um, 
we um the the guy who was going to direct us before john came on board wonderful guy um uh it was actually his idea and he um you know um and he said he'd been on so many film shoots where directors had done that um you know he ended up not directing because he was a award-winning editor and director and he kept getting these multi-million dollar gigs and eventually you know he just i said to him look i want to go ahead and he said look go ahead without me chloe it's fine but um but but that i kept in and you know and he's credited with that because it it, it was such a funny funny storyline and i think it, it it worked you know kind of yeah i mean so i personally never encountered it but yeah apparently it happens that's crazy yeah, yeah. Hmm. you know since since we don't live that lifestyle you know over in la it's just you know, a lot of us imagine, you know, what is, you know, I know Ben and Jeff probably, you know what it's like, you know, being on uh, on set and stuff like that. But it's just. Well, yeah, but it's a little weird because we're with Bill. I mean, it's that's not like, yeah. that's not normal shit, you know. Yeah, what we're doing is not normal. No. <clears throat> you know, not at all. No. You know, a lot of people can't say that they're actually very close with the owner of the studio and the the guy that's producing it and right. directing it and filming it and lighting right. it, you know? Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> and, you, know. you know, but we're building our own sets and we're doing, you know what I mean? So we're that's totally, great. I love it. Totally hands on, which, you know, which makes it really, really personal. And we love that, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we love Bill, you know, but that's, it's he, not he's normal, family, you know? So we, you know, we're, we're just not normal. Nothing we do is normal. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you know, yeah. No, that that's good. That's the best way to be not normal. No, no, I mean, we don't even we don't even have a script. Well, that's no. that's good. I I I'm always more relaxed with those interviews that are without a script. Oh, no, even the filming. There's yes, no script. We're, we're filming a TV series that coincides with our comic book. And we're using yes. the comic book as the script, and we're just <laughs> elongating every scene. I love it. Well, you know, well, I and I find that the actors who are good with improv are the best. Like, I mean, with with the Jodea movie, um, the guy who plays Harold. He improvs most of that, um, and same with uh, Steve Kimber, the guy who plays Fred. Um, he's a stand-up comedian, and so they um, they improv a lot of the dialogue, and it was hilarious. You know, I think it makes it more real. You know, yeah, it does. It makes it more real, and especially like with me being a writer. Often when I write characters, like I, I'm not a guy, I sometimes say things that guys would never say, and I've had actors look at me and go, "Oh, the guy just wouldn't say that," and I, I'm, I'm really like. <laughs> yeah. I'm totally cool. Like I'm just like I want it to sound real. So I always just say to them, "Well, say what sounds natural to you," you know. And so it's um, you know, it does. It does. You're right. It does seem more more real. And um, and and that's and I and I like that. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Leo's geeking out up there for some reason. Yeah, he is. He's geeking no, I, out about something. I, I, I'm keeping eyes on everything. So, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Uh, so this movie, uh, you know, just uh, hit theaters. So what, what's your, your next project that you're working on? Oh, I have a few. Um, I'm not sure which one. It's going to be a case of whichever one gets the most interest. I mean, I have several. I have an action project. I have a courtroom drama. I have um, a thriller. I have, um, so I, I'm not actually sure. It's hard to say. Okay. So, so, uh, so basically what she's telling everybody that's watching and, and going to be listening is, Join our page, follow along, <laughs> and pay attention. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Or they can find out more about Aware Leo. Up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. <laughs> and that would be have. in the show notes. That's why we have him. <laughs> yeah, well, it, yeah, I, I got one job and I tried to do it well. Uh, we do have the trailer. Would you like to introduce uh, introducing uh, Jodea? Uh, oh. Do you mean like... <laughs> uh, like uh, what do you want me to say? Like where it's playing, or say whatever, whatever. You, whatever you'd like to say. <laughs> okay, so um, so introducing Jordea is a night, a little romantic comedy, which um, about the film industry, um, about a very untalented actress who crosses paths with a world famous director, and he teaches her to act. And it's just, it's not, it's meant to be just a feel good story, um, which people I think need after the year of COVID, um. So yes, it's um it's on at the the Lamley Theaters have screened it and it's now they're screening it online. I'm not sure for how much longer, but it's on their site lamley.com. And then we are yeah, and then we should we should be online on various platforms pretty soon after. Very cool. Very yeah. Cool.
five dollars for our men special today. If you get Ethan Burns for me, then the movie's a hit. Ethan's heard all the rumors about the drug abuse, and he doesn't want any part of it. We need time now. We try. How about we come to an arrangement? I'll take care of the damage, and you put me in your film. I don't believe this. You killed my brother. Now, vengeance is mine. You can teach that to act. I convince Ethan Burns to do the lead in the film. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Punching. It says on the script. Just, just don't. Vengeance is mine. Is it? I feel like the bag's winning here. Now it's time for you to fate. She is so bad. He's got to be fucking her. Ugh. Cut! Hollywood's not about loyalty, Zach. Who is she? Who is she? All that stuff you told me about thinking I had potential, that was all lies, huh? Do you ever see a film called Born in Vegas? That, that is the worst acting ever. Have you seen it? I had the lead role in that film. There we go. And uh, links are in the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, you know, uh, it's hard to it say. Awesome. It, Dude. I you was laughing my ass like a off. girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh no, well 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 it's it's I mean it it's it just it's meant to be a funny silly movie, you know, and I just think um yeah, so I just yeah, but hopefully people watch it and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that one line that she's so bad he must be fucking her. I literally almost choked on my soda. <laughs> <laughs> I was like what? Uh, yeah, 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 most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. yeah. It's, it, it's a good comedy, but it's also a you know a feel good movie, you know. And we definitely need more movies like that after you know the hell of a year that we all had. So it's uh, yes. Uh, yes. people keep talking about this hell of a year that they had. I don't. I, I didn't experience that. I don't know. But, but you you don't need it with with your work if you you're based inside, aren't you? So you you were okay. No, I actually I'm, I do construction for a living. This is oh, like this is yeah, this, this is, is like a part. Yeah, this is oh, a wow. thing that we do yeah. for fun. Construction um, would have been that would have not been good. No, no, that wasn't any fun. But we were able to kick out two comic books last year good. and start the filming of the TV series. So we just so you use it as an opportunity. That's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That. Take that's advantage that. of the time. Yep. Yes, that's it. Well, we um we actually well we were so lucky. You know, we shot the entire movie. We finished shooting the pickup shots except one the week before lockdown. And the shot we didn't get is the shot at the limo shot when Zach goes to pick her up for the premiere. And um, to me as a girl, that's one of my favorite moments because it's the romantic moment. It's the first time he kind of sees her as a woman. Yeah. The director, John, was kind of like, well, we didn't, he didn't really want to do that shot in the first place. And it ended up the day we were shooting, there was a mix up with the limo company, which is why we didn't get it. So we shot the reverse on me, but we didn't get the shot on Zach. And then of course lockdown happens. So, um, you know, so John edited the movie, except for that shot. And I was, you know, resigned to thinking, will we ever get it? You know, will you know, and, but we did like towards the end of lockdown, we managed to get in touch with the limo, with the limo company who were amazing. And they, um, and we got it because to me, you know, I mean, John was like, you know, well, you got to think about we might just have to take that out altogether. And we just go straight from her putting on makeup to the movie premiere. And, you know, a few of the girls who've seen the movie agree with me. It's it's very much a girl thing. They're like, no, we need that. We needed that shot. So, yeah. Right. Well, but, sometimes it's those little things that can make a big difference. The right. sentimental right. side. Of stuff. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it's, so, yeah. So lockdown was good for us and that we got the editing done. Right. Cool. Um, now you did a 
you uh, you wrote another one, and I think Leo mentioned it before. And I just who is Stephanie V? Oh yes, that was my first movie. I wish I was Stephanie V. That was um, it, that again. That was another comedy. Um, that was about that followed the lives of three girls in Australia, all from different ethnic backgrounds. And Stephanie V is this gorgeous Eurasian girl who seemingly has everything, but you know, and in and, and it's later found out that she's actually HIV positive. So it's a comedy, but with the dark side to it too. Oh, okay. I was I, I was trying to figure out if like Stephanie V was actually a real person that No, no, it's a yeah. Okay. It's um I mean look, you you're better than most. A lot of people said to us, Oh, is that I wish I were Stephanie the fifth. Um so it's um you know Yeah, it, no, no, I would yeah. yeah. That would be weird. <laughs> But yeah, no, no, that was that was my first movie, my first feature, yeah. Uh, and you won an award of excellence for that. That yeah, that did that had that did had a little that had a good festival run. Yep, it was. I mean, it was very much a um, a little independent piece that, um, but it was a lot of fun making it. And um, yeah, it was it was my first one. Now was that filmed in Australia while you were there? Yeah, that that was, was when I was living there. Yes. Okay, but it premiered in New York. It did premiere in New York. I, I find I it's a, well, I see I love America. America tends to support my movies more than Australia does. So <laughs> I always get rejected. All my films always get rejected from the Australian film festival, but they do really well over here. So um yeah, so it's like we um it um we get all kinds of um you know I it, so yeah so it's like so it's 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 wonderful. So yeah, so we actually that was a festival. The New York City International Film Festival, and that year they haven't done it. I, I haven't done it since they actually had outdoor screenings in Times Square. Right. And we opened the festival, and it was just amazing, surreal, seeing your movie up there in Times Square. It was it was incredible. That's cool. Yeah, it was great. I want my movie in Times Square. I'll probably get arrested for playing it, but hey, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Arrested just for being there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> It's okay though. I'm I'm okay with that. I don't mind. Yeah. <coughs> so you're raised in the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. No. Nothing. Nothing. You carry on. Oh, no. No. I I was gonna say. So so you're raised in uh, Zimbabwe, and your father was a cricket star. That's okay. right. I wanted I wanted to see where he was going with that <laughs> stuff. That I want to talk about that after. But yes, your father was a cricket star. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. He used to play cricket for Zimbabwe. Yep. Okay. What's How it? do you play with crickets? <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> it's like it's uh, that. You see, this is why when we immigrated, why we didn't go to America because I don't think my dad could have handled going to a country where they didn't know what cricket is. <laughs> so my, that's why my parents are in Australia. I came over here by myself. But yeah, it's um, yeah, it's uh, a cricket is a very slow version of baseball. Um, okay, I mean, in, over here we have crickets. Yes. Are there, <laughs> did, did you guys? Do you guys have crickets? We do. We have crickets in Zimbabwe. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so. The hell kind of question is that? <laughs> yeah, what the hell, Jeff? It's like, so, oh, so hey, look, is, a fucking squirrel. Is cricket the one with like the flat bat or is that? Yeah, they have yes. a flat bat. And please don't ask me too much about it. I'm so okay. embarrassed to say I know so little about the game, even though I grew up watching it. Um, yeah. And I know they about, bounce the ball. Really. It looks like no, golf, sort of. Uh, no, no. I think you're thinking of croquet. I, well, maybe. I'm, I don't, I don't yeah. know. It's all the same to me. It's uh, it's <laughs> baseball, but they all wear white, and it's very slow. Croquet, isn't that the thing you do with the needles and and you like no, make things? <laughs> oh, you're thinking of gotcha. yeah, yeah, no cricket. That's sort of like knitting. Leo, <laughs> I don't I don't know anything about sewing or knitting, so I. Can't. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Well, this what is also, you-, you know, I barely know sports myself, but, you know, the U.S. is mainly just, uh, you know, football and baseball. Baseball you know. and basketball, I think, as well. And hockey. Yeah, I was going to say, no, no, hockey. hockey. Baseball is like watching fucking paint dry. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You see, baseball's exciting compared to cricket. No, cricket- well, it's all like watching paint dry to me. <laughs> <laughs> see, I love baseball. I, I, I try to make one game a year. Um, so, yeah. Okay. I went to a baseball game once. I think I fell asleep. <laughs> Under a blanket because it was fucking freezing. It was in April. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to go to a game in like L.A. or something where it's always sunny. Yeah. Or or, or go in a box. Oh, uh, he can't <laughs> yeah. afford the box. Yeah. Well, those are you hellish expensive usually, yeah. yeah. A box? What am I, a cat? 
I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> not, even, not, no, not touching oh, that okay. one. So, so let's veer it back to your your film. Can production. you do that, please? <laughs> I'm going to try. So, so you said. Uh, with these passion products that, uh, projects that you have, you, you said you had to, you know, become a producer to make sure they get made. Uh, so what's the process? So, you, you know, it's, we keep on hearing like we, I know people outside of film industry, like we know to, what the director does and stuff like that, but like a producer, you know, we, we really don't know what it does. Yeah, I know it's funny. So many people said to me, what's the difference between a producer and director? Um, but but yeah, but I mean, and I didn't know myself. Well, I mean, when I was a kid, I was used to wonder the same thing. It would it basically it's a producer who gets a project off the ground. They like um, they will appoint a director, um, and um, and then they will go out. The producer's job is to find the money, go to investors, um, and also to um, it's more the producer who's involved than the director. To package it for the bigger budget projects, you they, there's a whole packaging thing. Like they will say, okay, so here's this project. We have Steven Spielberg directing, and we would like to put it out to you know. You go to the agents. We'd like to offer make an offer to Tom Cruise or to whoever um, they want to go it out to. So it's like it's a whole process which the producer does in getting it off the ground, and then also it's kind of like um, you know, at the very end, it's kind of the producer has the final say of the cut, which is why you often get those um, director cuts. Because that's like the directors having their say, like, hate what you did to my ending. This is my version. So that's why often you get those on DVD. So, yeah. So it's kind of like the producer's kind of like the power person. Leo, oh. you should know that. You're the producer of the Dorkening Podcast. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? This is different. This is, I'm pushing buttons here. It's just. <laughs> Well, that's kind of what the producer does. He pushes everybody's fucking, or she pushes that's everybody's right. buttons. Right. They do, they do. Yep. They are. You know how many buttons I push for sponsorships? <laughs> yep. And they they get on everyone's nerves because they kind of like, why does that cost so much? You know, we're not spending X amount of dollars on that. You know, so it's kind of, um, you know, the director's job's easy. He just tells everyone, all the actors, what to do. Um, so it's you know, but but yeah, but it's uh, but yeah, so that's technically what a producer is. Um. That was actually a good answer because I always wondered that myself. That was actually a good question. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm almost impressed with you tonight, Leo. <laughs> Just saying. You don't give Leo enough credit. I give Leo more than enough credit. So I, I don't. Who else that. did I send a baby Yoda silver to? A baby Yoda silver. Yeah, one mm. ounce. It's one troy ounce of silver shaped like baby Yoda. Come on, look at Baby Yoda behind him back there. I, I, I give him more than enough credit. <laughs> Leo. Yes, sir. We have sponsors. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, it's, it's a good thing. Thanks yeah, for reminding me. It's about that time, so you should probably do that before we forget again. Uh, okay, so, yeah, we, you know, we, we try our best to produce a big show for you. And, uh, you know, with that, you know, it, it, it costs money to run everything. And we have an awesome sponsor. You know, we love indie people and, uh, you know, Deadly Grounds. They're a little mom and pop shop right here in Connecticut. They make the absolute best coffee you'll ever have. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm drinking a lot of it right now. Uh, but you know what? Here's a zombie talking about coffee. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. And uh, yeah, so if you love flavored coffee, I'm drinking chocolate raspberry right now. Uh, they have a new s'mores flavored, uh, which uh, I, I keep on hearing is amazing. But I, I have too much coffee. I need to uh, drink Isn't the chocolate for... raspberry the witch's brew? Is that witch's yeah, brew? Oh, my... oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So much. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you okay, Leo? I'm okay. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you need a Kleenex or a tissue? <laughs> Well, I mean, you look, it you look like you got really excited just now. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Well, this, is, this is what happens when I'm drinking coffee instead of, you know, my normal rum and coke. You know, is, uh, you know, once I'm, I might, I, once, <laughs> <laughs> once the doctor says that I'm okay to drink, I'll be get back on the, uh, the rum and coke. Oh, oh, you, you can't drink right now. I'm so sorry. 
Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm on a couple different meds right now, so. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I was in the hospital a couple weeks back, but it's uh, oh, all right. good. Well, it's good, but uh, you know what's even better is uh, these guys here have an awesome trailer for episode one. Uh, what, what, what's that look for? I don't know. Push the buttons. Get. Will you stop drinking again? If your world was turned upside down, what? would you do? What the fuck are we going to do now? Get high. more fun that way. So if you want to support these awesome people, check the links up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. That was Token with the Dead episode one, and uh, there's a Vimeo link right below. And uh, you're talking about drinking, uh, you know, Connecticut's I was, legal I, now. I wasn't even impressed by that trailer. I mean, those guys can't fucking act. <laughs> and they're both ugly. When are, when are we going to see a trailer for episode two? Are you going to do a trailer for that? It's in the works. It's in the works. Yeah, there'll be a trailer for that. I don't know, but we're not here to talk about that. No. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And yes, you're right. I, I thought it was great. In Connecticut, did go legal. It did. It did. Yes, it did. Yeah. It, so, are we going to see you cracking up the pipe? Uh, Jeff, better drop off some gummies when you uh when you uh drive on through. Ooh. <laughs> that's, well, so that's a, how it's going to be. Huh? That is a uh, that is a date. Yes, I will drive is. the. I'll make them drive the hour out of the way to the other <laughs> side of Connecticut just to drop them off. Yeah. See, that's the weird thing is they they legalized it, but legally you can't bring it into the state. Like you can't cross borders, and Connecticut can't sell. So it's illegal to possess. You just. I, I mean, it's legal to possess. You just there's you can't buy it or you can't. Yeah, you're a couple of years it. away with that. Uh, just move to California, think, you'll be fine, I Leo. I think it's next year. Uh, yeah, I heard a couple of years away with that, but a couple of years to grow. Okay. You know, yeah. If you like Massachusetts, it's all dragging your ass. Okay. They just drag their ass. They want the license money, the license money, the license money. Yeah. Hello, gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Do you not see <laughs> that we have a guest? We do. We do. We do. Oh, oh okay. I yeah. thought maybe you just wanted to be like the Leo and Jeff show, and we we could just sit back and chill and drink. <laughs> So, um, is um, who's who's Catherine? Is it your mom, or just your sister? Your, my sister's your sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. she wrote and directed Ghost Death. Yes, yes, that was a short movie she did with me, um, which was very, very, a very quirky one when when she was studying film, and we um. We actually managed to do that at the city. We actually got permission because when you're film students and part of a film school, you can get permission. We actually shot that at the Sydney Opera House. 
Oh, oh cool. Wow. Yeah, that was, um, anyway, that, that was good fun, yeah. Wow. See, now I'm, I gotta go to Australia. You you would love Australia. Most most Americans love it. It's very it's very much like here, but more laid back because they're less people. So, um, you know, it's it, it's it's a great place. I do love Australia. I, I hear it's more dangerous though. No way. No. How so? No. Um, oh, uh, the the creatures. <laughs> Like, like the creatures. Oh, yeah. the creatures. That's, that's, really the like creatures. That's, that's like when you go out in the the outback in the bush. That's like you in in the towns. No, there's like it's safe as much. Yeah. yeah, you got to watch out for the giant toads there. Yeah, well, I, you you well, see they're, these they're pictures of, of giant spiders. Yeah, and, and there are there are dangerous spiders. Yes, but I mean, it's really you know, it's 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 no. I mean, that's the you know the chances are of you encountering one when you. In the city, is okay. The outback in Australia, mm -hmm. normal daytime in LA. Yeah, I'd go to Australia too. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I got. I, I hear you also got to be, be uh, beware of the drop bears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. Now that, that there are so many legends and myths about <laughs> drop bears, it's like it was one of the first things I was told. But the thing with Australia is, um, if you haven't seen Australia, you, you do have to be out and see a little bit of the country and see kangaroos because okay. kangaroos, like everyone thinks they're these cute things. They're actually quite scary when you see them in the in the flesh. They're pretty big, yeah. um, and um, and it's just that, yeah, it's uh, no, it's, it's it's a great place and it's very um, the people are very friendly, and it's just very laid back. It's um, you know, it's 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 it's, it's, it's it is a great place to live. Oh. So, so, so drop bears are a thing. I thought they were just koalas that you know you call drop bears just to scare people. No, no, no. They, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, no, koala, yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah. They're, nice. not, they're not koalas. Yeah, they're just like it's, no. it's yeah. Now, when you did when you lived there, did you visit New Zealand? I haven't. I want to though. My my mom and my mom and my sister have. I would love to see New Zealand. It looks like the most gorgeous country. That's on my bucket list. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely mine too. Is it it's Angel a, Falls? that's in New Zealand. I have no idea. The waterfall that when you stand at the bottom, it's one of the one of the largest waterfalls. But when you stand at the bottom, really? it actually looks like it's flowing up instead of down. Oh, uh, I off. think I, I think it is. And I I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. But yeah, it's. Um, but it's supposed to be beautiful, so it's on my bucket list. Yes. No, it looks it's gorgeous. Yeah, you, you know, you look at anything out outside of New England, and it's, and it's like, you know. Well, New England, New England is no, beautiful England in its own gorgeous. right. I love New England; it's so beautiful. And you know, I mean, where'd we go last Saturday? Oh, East Cuddy Bumfuck, right? Greenfield or some shit. Yeah, I was in the middle of fucking nowhere. We had to yeah. drive across. We had to drive across yeah. a freaking brook just to get to the field we were supposed gorgeous. to be. Gorgeous! Oh, lovely. You know, but no, uh, you know, there's beautiful, there's beautiful, uh, beautiful country up here. It, it is. It's beautiful. I love it. My sister-in-law. You know, there's none of it in Connecticut for some reason, but. I, I've only, you know, I've got to admit, I've only ever taken a train through Connecticut. I've never actually been there, but I saw it. I saw it look beautiful. He's, just, bust, he's busting on me because I'm in Connecticut. So. I know. I know. <laughs> but I, I think it looks gorgeous. I, the, the East Coast a bit in the West Coast any day. Yeah. The, uh, so, um, yeah, the, the. The coast in Connecticut is really good. If you go like inwards, it's uh, you know, and some of the cities are a bit crazy, but yeah, the coast is okay. Other than Hartford, it's just dead. Yeah, well, you can get a little scary too. New Haven and uh, yeah. Well, Hartford. Vegas is a city that never sleeps. Hartford, Hartford is a city that's always asleep. <laughs> really? Seems awake when I'm leaving work at you know four thirty. Well, well, what I'm saying is I I've done events down in, in Hartford. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the events are on the weekend and like everybody leaves Hartford on the weekend. You know the event the event closes at five or six o'clock. You go out to these there's, two. There's, there's <laughs> it's like the it's like the Jeff and Leo show up there. There's nothing there. There's no people. There's nothing. But I think I think when you're so close to New York, it's kind of like why wouldn't you? Go to the Big Apple if you could. If you're that close, you know it's um. See, that's where we film is New York, but we don't go to the city. We go upper state, right on the Hudson. Oh, oh, okay, yes, lovely. 
Yes. So we're up in the country area, which is oh, nice. Yes. That's nice. That is nice. Yes. But all right. Anyway. So <laughs> as Leo said earlier, I'm getting in on this. Shut up. <laughs> as Leo said earlier, we have mentioned that you were uh, you were born and raised in Zimbabwe. Yes. Um, and you lived there till about 2005. Yes. And there was a reason why you left. Would you like to uh, fill fill in the the listeners and viewers? I, I mean, what was mostly political. Um, I mean, for those of you who don't know, Zimbabwe up until four years ago was ruled by a dictator, Robert Mugabe, who had been in power. His it was in power thirty seven years altogether, and it pretty much things were getting intimidating. Um, they were it got this pe people were getting attacked for their political beliefs. I mean, not like here where you get verbally attacked, like people were getting beaten up and killed. Um, and um, so we got out. And I also made a documentary where I interviewed um, Zimbabwean refugees, people who'd had to leave. And so, yeah, so the bottom line is I can't go back to Zimbabwe. I mean, I possibly could now because Mugabe's dead, but it's um, under Mugabe, I could not go back because the law there, when Mugabe passed a law saying that if you spread anti-government information internationally you can they can take away your passport and put you in jail for 20 years and um and i, I wasn't going to be taking that risk so um you know so that so that was kind of it so yeah i did it was very anti mugabe this documentary i did and um but it was actually it was great it was great making it and i met some amazing people who had some incredible stories right right and it's so important that, to get that out I mean, people, yeah you know, to me to yeah. me that's a very out of everything that you've done, all these you know great films and the writing and the directing and producing, that to me is is who you really are. But it took guts and balls. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's um and actually and I actually well I, I you know I mean having said that you know don't give me too much glory because I did actually make it from the safety of Australia. These refugees were living in Australia, which um and um but um uh, and uh, but even in australia i had some people who wouldn't meet with me and who backed out of interviews because they had had such horrific experiences um that they were terrified they just they, they refused um some of them i mean if you if you watch documentaries mo uh, most of them you know some give their names courageously others some choose to remain anonymous but um it's and then one guy, I think, just gives his first name. He doesn't give his last name. But it's just, yeah, but it was very, um, but yeah, it was interesting. Just people who had had really, really bad things happen. Um, they were just so traumatized, even though they were living across the world, they just didn't want to risk anything. Now, so, is that um, is that available to watch still? Um, no, I can I can give you a copy. <laughs> I yeah. would I would love to see it. I mean, and, and if people are looking for it out there, I believe the name of it is A Stranger in My Homeland. Yes. Yes. And you, from what I've read, and I don't know if it's true, but you actually won awards for that documentary. We did. We did. We won. We won a, a, a lot of awards, um, and um, we won. Um, uh, you know, we we, um, we we screened on a few festivals that dealt with human rights and stuff because that's that's pretty much the message of it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, it was you know looking at the situation in Zimbabwe and um, right. you won best director for that. I did, yes, yes, that was that that was yeah my directing debut. Yeah, I mean, what a way to start off, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, well, this is the thing. like I'm not I'm not really a documentary maker, but when a, that was a topic that. I was just very passionate about and um and it was also frustrating because people often you know this is the thing when when we were in zimbabwe and there were all these horrible things happening around us i can remember turning on the news and we'd put on cnn bbc and my mom was like why aren't they reporting what's happening here you know they were reporting on everything else happening in the world so we um you know and i i kind of wanted people to know so that was that was my meat that was my reason for doing it but yeah well, I commend you for that, actually. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it also it says here that you're heavily involved in the Save Zimbabwe movement as well. Still, is that correct? Yes. It's. Okay. I mean, it's just any opportunity to help Zimbabweans. You know, it's like, I mean, even now Mugabe's gone. Um, it's still. I mean, the country's still in a very bad way. Um, you know, economically, socially, um, and so yeah. So you know, I just try you know try and get people involved in um you know in 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 help in helping out people donating money you know i mean so many people there are starving and it's just it's very it's very sad but there is um 
you know, there's a fantastic website which came around about, gosh, probably about five years ago now, called World Remit, where you can actually send money to people in Zimbabwe and they get it right away. And it's like, um, and it's ver it's safe. They're they're as safe as anything, and they um and they communicate with you as well. Because the first time I did it, I was really hesitant. I thought, who are these people? I'm trusting them with my money. But they they're really good. And if there's ever a problem with the money, they will text you or call you. And um yeah, so it's a site called World Remit, which is just something if people and it's not, they don't just send money to Zimbabwe. It's anywhere in the world. Um and it's a it's a it's it, it you know I think it's been I think it's helped a lot of people that site. Yeah. Now where where exactly? is Zimbabwe it is um it's it's landlocked it's it's just north of South Africa okay all right so it's down it's it's down, it's down the, in the, the southern, southern part Africa. okay but it's okay. not South Africa that's what I have to stress <laughs> right but it's like we have a like an American Canadian thing that you guys have it's when people say to you oh you're from South Africa and you're it's kind of like no I'm from Zimbabwe <laughs> it's kind of like, so I've just got to stress it they're two different countries Kind of like North America, South America. Yeah, North America, South America, America, Canada. It's like, right. um, you know, it's the same. Um, Australia, New Zealand. Um, it's, you know, it's the same. It's, you know, there's the same. People kind of associate them with each other because then you're by. But when you're from those places, you kind of like, no, no, no. We are different to them. Right. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I knew where it was, but I wanted our people listening to know where it was. Sure, oh. you did, Jeff. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I googled that shit. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. I had to. <laughs> I was curious, actually. I mean, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of little countries in Africa. A lot well, of them. Oh, what's, yeah. what's very funny is that I once was going for a job interview where I had to get fingerprints and all of that. And, you know, um, I go to the place, they and um, fill out the paperwork, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And eventually, this police officer, you know, is like, when it comes out and says to me, there's a problem. And I said, what? She said, your country is not in our database. It doesn't exist. <laughs> kind of like, what? Yeah. yeah. And I said, well, it used to be called Rhodesia. Look up Rhodesia. Rhodesia is not in there either. And so I was like, well, what do I do? Because place of birth, I'm born in this place, which is not in this this database and i said eventually they ended up just putting it down in south africa which i had to settle for that because <laughs> yeah but it was very it was very funny that being you know it was like no and i mentioned i remember i actually brought up a map on my phone i was like see it does exist i didn't make this place <laughs> up <laughs> well that's odd was that going for a job in the states or in in no, uh, it, was, in it was here in california yep yeah. really wow. yeah wow yeah. no um no we know it exists See, she's right there. <laughs> yeah, but I could, I could be lying. I could really just be from, you know, pouring no, out no, um, the story. Um, I think, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff and Leo, but Chloe is now the second actress that we've had on this year from Zimbabwe. Oh. Yes. Correct? That is correct. Oh, who was the first? Oh, I knew she was going to ask me that. Yeah, so you loaded, <laughs> you loaded oh, yourself with that one, but no, right. it's, um, you are right. Hold on, I'll tell you. You got, keep keep chatting. I'll tell you in two seconds. No, I know you're <laughs> right because um, when I was when I was doing my research, um, it dawned on me that Valerie Jane know, Parker. Yes. Ah. Yep. How dare yep. she? I'm supposed to be the only Zimbabwean. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, obviously it not because it doesn't exist. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we proved that it does exist twice. Twice. Yes. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, that's kind of odd, actually. Yeah, right. That's funny. It's like, and it's, it's 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 um yeah, that is so funny. I'm gonna have to talk to Clint over at October Coast how we got the interview with you, but that was the same gentleman that got us the interview with Valerie Jane. I'm gonna be like, are you targeting? Uh, that's so funny. Amazing people from Zimbabwe here. What's going on? I'm just curious. That's so funny. Yeah. So, uh, besides, besides uh, you know, uh, producing and, and directing, uh, what do you do in your off time or also uh, in res retrospect? Uh, what did you do during 2020 to keep yourself sane? Right. Well, I, I'll just say I, I don't direct. Not normally. That's the, the documentary. I'm I'm a writer actor, but um, uh, but yeah. Um, well, I, I, we work on the edit 
And um, and then 2020 was great because I actually, a friend of my dad wanted his biography written and was looking for a writer. And like the timing could not have been more perfect because this was for lockdown. I needed something to do. And um, so I wrote his biography. Um, and that 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 was that was fantastic. It was I think had I not had that to occupy me with during lockdown, I probably would have gone crazy. But um, but yes, no, I do I do I do um, a bit of script editing. Um, but yeah, my I mean my main love is acting and writing. Those are my main passions. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Now your mom is an artist. That's right. Now what kind of art? Because um, art. Being an artist can, can encompass so many different My things. My mom is one of these artists who is incredibly talented at whatever she paints. She does a lot of still lifes, a lot of landscapes. She has got done numerous portraits of my sister and I, where she always flatters us. Um, but um, she can literally, I mean, she can paint anything. She's very, very, you know, she loves to do seascapes. Um, she, 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 she loves the ocean. My parents live five minutes from the beach, so she... Um, she's done the most amazing seascapes, um, and in, and in Africa she used to do a lot of amazing landscapes. So, um, yep, she is incredibly talented. I I don't know which end of the pencil to hold up when it comes to drawing, but um, it was just uh, you know. But she, um, yeah, she she literally. But yeah, I think I mean I think her she does she her portraits and seascapes. I think are her two main loves. No, oh, okay, cool. She's um. She's always she's always doing something, you know. Every time I talk to her on Skype, um, or you know, she'll always be showing me what she's painting at the moment. And um, yeah, it's, yeah. Now, is there is there any way to find her work? Uh, you know, I she did have a website. She was composing. I've got to ask her about that. I think um, I think it is AnnetteKeeliff dot com. Uh, if I look that up now, she did have um. Yes, yes, AnnetteKeeliff.com. Can you put that in the comments? I got it. Yes. You got it? Yeah. I like good artwork. Yeah, no, she is. I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I think she's incredibly talented. Well, of course you're biased. It's your mother. Yes. yes. Uh, That's to be expected. Yes. Well, she thinks everything I do is wonderful as well, which is why I never go to her when I have a script because she'll tell me it's excellent when it sucks. So um, there are disadvantages to that. So that's in the chat. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I took it right off my my show notes. Oh. <laughs> but I just let you guys run with the show tonight. I'm having fun just sitting back and watching. <laughs> Yeah. Well, since, since uh, we can also make it full screen and just uh, well, hi, that's great. I mean, hold on. Yeah, I did. I actually did a pretty good job on the lineup today. Yeah, nice. Get a oh, little see, grayer though. I didn't shave. <laughs> yeah, this is from traveling to New York for a year with Jeff. A little gray in here. Yeah. Was that because of my driving? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh really? No, your driving's fine. I usually just, talk I, about 20 minutes off the estimated time of arrival, though. Yeah, yeah. I usually get in the truck and I look at him and go, did you double dose your CBD before we leave? And he goes, no. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and if he says, yeah, I'm like, okay, it's going to be a smooth ride. He's not going to be screaming at everybody. No, that's more important when we have to go to the cities. Yeah. Because I don't like cities. Oh, yeah, me too. I and Every other car is the enemy. I get it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? he, he's in the fast lane doing 85. Somebody's doing the speed limit, and he's screaming at him. Uh, yeah, like, well, you, you didn't see me on way, my way over here tonight, today, when I was running late. I was like, <laughs> I was on the horn at the minute the light turned green if they didn't move. <laughs> I think that will go, who the hell's that crazy bitch? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a show to get on. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with an aggressive woman. Yeah. Nope. Not at all. Right? Cool. Did I miss Leo, anything? Leo looked like he was going to say something. Well, I, I was going to say something about traffic, but I'm trying to limit my, my off comments. But uh, Why? We don't. Okay. Well, see, like in Connecticut, you know, especially driving through Hartford, if you're doing like 20 over the speed limit, you're in the slow lane. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. No, it's funny, like I am I I get I do get very um 
yeah, I don't like driving in cities, but also I, I avoid the freeways because I don't know whether it comes from that I grew up in a country where we drive on the other side of the road, but I freak out on the freeways. And I think I'm the car you all hate on the freeway. I'm that slow person. All the cars just fly past me and I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God. So if I can avoid the freeway, I always do. I just hate it. I hate them. Sometimes you can't though. Sometimes you actually have to take it. Otherwise it's going to take you an extra hour. But um, yeah, I'm not a freeway person. Especially in California. It's like it takes three hours just to get down the freeway. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's just, it's terrible. Yeah. But, but some, yeah, interestingly enough, my GPS, I always consult my GPS and sometimes a day, like usually around now, it's what, five in the evening. Sometimes it actually takes the same amount of time if you're going the freeway or not going the freeway. So I'll just always not go it because I just think, yeah. I don't blame you there. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, see, we're all, you know, if we want to get anywhere here, you got to take the freeway because it's, yeah, yeah, everything. So uh, otherwise, it's a long way guy. around. Oh, backroads. Yeah. Tom says he's a backroads guy. Yes, but exactly. Tom Morris, yeah. I'm a backroads guy. I like yeah. the backroads too, though, but I, usually I, I, if they're I, dirt and I can slide sideways. And, you know. Yes, yes, yes. I, I get <laughs> <laughs> Except the problem sometimes with the, the backroads, sometimes, is, you know, um, I, I always find that, you know, sometimes like I feel like I'm jinxed if I'm running late and I'll take the backroads and I will to choose the back road where a garbage truck is choosing to do a U turn. <laughs> you know, like yeah, that ever happened to you at the road, and then you look at the cars behind you and it's like, no, hurry up. <laughs> I usually hit the school buses. Oh, yep. I hate those, yes. The school yep. buses or, or the cyclists who just come in front of you and it's like, dude, I'm always terrified of hitting a cyclist. I'm just like <laughs> Right. Well, around here, a lot of them tend to ride right in the middle of the road. Yes, same here. Same here. It's just, um, yeah, that, it drives me crazy. Was um, that a reference to last weekend? Because that's what happened last weekend. We were oh, heading to Greenfield. Yeah, yeah, there was like seven of them. They just went whoop, right oh, in front of us. And he's oh, like, what the oh, fuck? Yeah, I'm like, hey, it's Michelin yeah. on Schwinn Day. Let's go. Move. It's dri <laughs> yeah, that drives me crazy. Yep. Yeah, because they're supposed to obey the laws of the road, just like an automobile. No, but it's like it's like they know they have this power over you, and that they have this, I can do anything, and it won't be my fault. Attitude, and it's just... yeah, and I've got this attitude of good thing you got your helmet on, buddy. Boom. <laughs> I, I tell you, there, there is a really terrible meme going around. I don't know if you saw it, and I hope I don't offend all your listeners, but it's of a photo. Of oh, a you can't guy. offend our listeners, trust no. me. <laughs> Well, it's a photo of a guy, and he's got this look of relief, and it says that feeling when you think you hit a dog, but you actually hit a cyclist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Actually, that is great. That's great. <laughs> As I'm an animal lover, so I, I had to crack yeah. up with that. Um, oh, right. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. My kitty cat actually was just in here for about a half an hour. Oh, she was like, you're also, she, I, I'm a crazy cat woman. What kind of kitty do you have? Uh, tabbies. <gasps> Me too. I have one tabby and one black. They're actually brother and sister. Their mom was just a real slut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a brother and sister. Right. And I have two solid black cats. Oh, yeah? Oh, gorgeous. That, yeah, they are. I, I have, yeah. That, well, my, my little girl's solid black. Well, I think no, she's actually got a little bit of funny she knows i'm talking about her she's pricking up her ears it's amazing mm -hmm. i know um she's got like a bit of like a sort of gin uh, not a ginger like a brownish on her and my tabby i think is just a full tabby yep but yeah no i'm i'm a crazy cat lady it's just yeah <laughs> good to know yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, you, you, you've uh, ben you've gone up in my estimation that much that you have a cat that you know you're a cat person it's like haha <laughs> ha, leo well, yeah see, I, I mean I, look I, behind I, me See all my cats? Oh, you too. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. Love it. Yeah, I, I'm the lone dog guy. My my wife oh. has my wife has our dog and uh, took her over to her parents to go swimming. So it's uh. I mean, I, I love dogs too. They're just not as good as cats. Yeah. <laughs> right. You don't have to pick a poop up. Yeah, well, ex exactly. You kind of do, but not really. You kind of do, but it's like, but they usually do it when they're trying to tell you something, like they pissed at you or something. But yeah. um, no, I mean, we got ours when they were eight weeks and they were, um, they, it's like, how do they know how to use a litter box? It just amazed me. They just know. <laughs> but they're also, um, I always say, you know, dogs are sluts. They like everyone. They, <laughs> whereas like when a cat likes you, you know you're worth it. It's just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cat, cats have an attitude. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. I, I, I heard something totally horrible uh, the other day. Uh, somebody at work said, uh, you know, after the apocalypse, the world's going to be run by cats because uh, dogs are too dumb to make it out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny Jeff, when you say cats having an attitude. My kitties are actually, I've had several friends now who describe them as puppy kitties because they are the friendly, they love people. They are, they are so, um, they will run up to whenever we have guests, they'll come and sniff them. And it's like, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. Um, it's like they are very, they, they, they definitely are people cats. Well, yeah, my, my cats are too. But when I say they have an attitude, it's like, you know, uh, one will jump up on my lap and want to be patted and purring. Yes, and yes. In the blink of an eye, that prick turns around and I'm all done. See oh, you yeah. later. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's an attitude. That's hilarious. Yeah, you, you can't, Um. yeah, no, but it's all, but no, I love that you're a cat person. Always See, have mine, been. Yeah, mine doesn't do that. Yeah, no. Um, I want, but, no but they're I, very particular about who they go to, too. Yes. yes. Ours too. It's uh, yeah. It's like they very um yeah. They just they they yeah. They they're very particular and they but they, yeah. They 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 go they gorgeous little creatures. Okay. Well, that was a whole conversation about kitty cats. I yes. was going to use the right. other word, but I See, thought I'd for all the people that stayed tuned in, you didn't know we were going to be talking about cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cats. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, they are they are perfect creatures. All right, Leo. On that note. I'm hungry. You're hungry? Ah, okay. Yeah, didn't you look at the time, Leo? It's quarter past eight. He's hungry. Oh, yeah. it's uh... Oh, wow. It's dinner time for Jeffrey. So what are you having tonight, Jeffrey? Yeah, what are you um, having, Jeffrey? Leftover ribs. Oh, nice. we got to stop because you're having fucking leftovers. Yes. It's like, <laughs> really? Well, because Ann went out. She was out tonight. So I was on my own. Okay, is it is it takeout or is it uh No, they, they came from um the Outback <laughs> a couple of nights ago. <laughs> oh, out, Outback Steakhouse? Yes. I didn't I ask if they were takeout. I thought you did, but you know what? I did see him drinking a beer. <laughs> Though beer has nothing to do with it. It was the gummy before the show. Oh, I I I neither confirm nor deny. Leo. Okay. Well, on that note, <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. And, uh, you know, we definitely urge you to check out uh, Chloe and uh, her movie, Introducing Jodea. And uh, we have a bunch of information and show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And uh, all the links where you can follow Chloe as well. Uh, so, uh, Chloe, where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Um, uh, I'm at my Instagram, um, Chloe Trakos Official, or. Um, um, I, I have a Facebook page too, just Chloe Tracos, and um, or just my IMDb is cool. Um, so yeah, just whatever. Um, you know, it's yeah, Instagram is probably the best. Sounds good. And uh, Jeffrey, don't even bother trying to interact with me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Facebook, I'll answer Facebook. Look me up, uh, Token with the Dead. Uh, you, the best place to get in touch with us is on uh, stilltoken.com. Uh, send us some emails uh, right through there. Uh, we'll get right back to you. <laughs> sure. You know, don't Google me, though. You can Google yeah. Leo, <laughs> but don't, don't Google me. There's too, there's, yeah. there's too many of me's out there. You'll yeah. just get really fucking confused. You might have. I mean, there's someone with your name who's a criminal, right? <laughs> well, doesn't everybody have somebody with their name that's well, a criminal? Actually, actually what, one of the guys who directed my last movie, there was actually a pedophile who had the same name. As him. <laughs> so he, had to, like, he has to like use his initial. Oh, <laughs> so, right? Yeah, it's like a, That's great. It's, yeah, it's, it's not. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, thankfully, Trachos is an unusual name, so it's, um, I don't have to worry about that too much. The <laughs> man... Uh, no, you forgot yourself. I did. You oh did. yeah. Okay. Well. Oh yeah. Me... 
Go uh, for me, just Google Leo Pine. You find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which, but more importantly, follow these awesome people. And uh, for me, I run a little thing called the Dorkening Podcast Network. Over uh, actually 40 shows on the network, which is absolutely insane. Uh, a lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome stuff. Matter of fact, we're going to be doing a show in about 45 minutes tonight. We're going to be talking about Jaws and uh, Loki Episode 3 and a bunch of other stuff. What? What? It wasn't me. I didn't do nothing. Did you just call me a nerd? No. no. He's trying to do the Jaws sound. No, actually, I said nerd. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't mind. It's, it's I prefer We're all nerds at heart, Leo. It's okay. Everybody's working their own way, you know? Mute them. Mute them. Just mute them. So, 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 hey. Never. Never. Yeah, I'll help you. <laughs> Uh, well, while you're muted, real quick, uh, Chloe, what makes you a dork uh, besides filmmaking? What are you oh. dorky about? Oh, I'm dorky about so many things. I mean, I was a total dork in school. I was I, I was never with the in crowd. I, I think I'm a dork in that whatever mainstream does, I tend to do the opposite. Okay. <laughs> so it can be anything. Whatever's fashionable, I'm not going to like it. Um, <laughs> Isn't that being a rebel? Uh, I, I, I'm actually, it's not deliberate though. I just generally find I'm, I'm like that. <laughs> That's just, um, uh, but yeah, I, um, what am I dorky about? I, I love old movies. That's nice. one thing I'm really dorky about. I, um, and I have my, I, and I love old uh, musical soundtracks. That's another thing. Um, and we, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think those are my two main ones, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, but <laughs> that's awesome. What, what's, old movies, what's, yeah. Yeah. what's one of your favorite old movies? Uh, well, my favorite movie of all time is My Fair Lady, which, as you can see, there are elements of that in Jodea. Um, uh, oh, so many. I love Casablanca. I love um, I um, uh, Charade um, uh, to Catch a Thief. Um, so many. I love Hitchcock. Um, basically, any Hitchcock film I love. Um, Very nice. Yeah. So I um yeah 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 those those I mean those are some of you I could I could be here all day but I love um yeah I I do I do have a thing for old movies uh, awesome. yeah very cool nice well um, we know Jeff's dorky about ribs <laughs> <laughs> uh, Benjamin take us out so, like Jeff said you can find us on all social media platforms uh, your best bets going to stilltoking.com. you can find out everything you want to know about us from the comic books to the filming. To this amazing show with amazing guests like Chloe, um, but to all our veterans and first responders, we want to thank you for doing what you do every day so people like us can do what we do every day. We're out of here. Be safe. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Peace out. Thank you. Thank you.